special edition of the Guild podcast. I'm Shay Dravenmore, and we are here with the fabulous Mr. Lee Modisette. He is the author of the Saga of Recluse series, the Legacies series, and many more fabulous books that I just don't have the time to list here today. Uh, Lee, thank you so much for joining us here today. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Uh, welcome to Pandemonium. So let's get into this. Um, for those of you, or for those of our viewers who aren't quite familiar with you or your work, uh, how is it that you decided that you wanted to be a writer? What made you think, this is what I'm going to do now? Well, actually, I never thought I was going to be a science fiction or a fantasy writer, especially a fantasy writer. I started out thinking I was going to be a poet. And I actually wrote poetry, had it published in small magazines, starting when I was about 15, and kept publishing until I was close to 30. In my late 20s, poetry that is, in my late 20s, a friend asked me if I would uh, consider writing science fiction, since I'd read it ever since I was a kid. And since the poetry wasn't going any place beyond small magazines, and I thought, I can do that, I think. And I wrote a story, and I sent it off to Analog. Ben Bo was then the editor. He sent it back with a little note that said, and in a sense, you really made a mess out of page 13. But this story is good enough. If you can fix that, I'd love to see it again. I did. He bought it. I thought I'm an author. It does not quite work that way. I think I wrote 26 stories before I had a second one that was sold. I thought, I'm getting there, maybe. And it was 15 or so before I sold the third store. And this went on for six, six or seven years, until I was selling maybe one in every three stories I submitted. And I was thinking, I was really getting the hang of this. And then I got another letter from Ben Bova, and it said, don't send me any more stories. I won't buy them. I didn't even want to read the rest of the letter, but I did. And it said, the reason why I don't buy more of your stories is because you're a novelist trying to cram novels into short stories. Go write me a novel. I did. But by the time I finished it, he was no longer editor of Analog. So I started shopping things around. And eventually I got that novel published, and I've been fortunate enough to have every novel since then published. Great. Uh, well, while you were getting started in the writing business, did you ever take any kind of writing classes or join any writer's groups? Or was it all very much uh, self-led? No. I'm probably the closest thing in this field to what might be called a classically trained writer. I uh, had five years of Latin, seven years of French, deep historical background, broad education, I did not major in English or writing in college, but I took a lot of courses, had a senior seminar in writing poetry, um, and a senior thesis in poetry. But my major in college was actually a double major, political science and economics. But every job I had after getting out of college, even when I was a Navy pilot, somehow I ended up involving a lot of writing. I was the administrative officer of the squadron in the Navy, and then I got involved in my other training, economics, and was writing reports on the sales of filters, regulators, and lubricators in the, in, in the uh, industrial pneumatics field. And then, after an unsuccessful stint in real estate, where I discovered that I was possibly one of the worst real estate sales, salesmen in the city of Denver, um, I latched on as a research assistant for a for a candidate for Congress and started writing research reports, speeches, and that sort of thing for him, which led to a job in Washington, where I did more writing, and things such as speeches, reports, and legislation. And eventually, somehow, I ended up writing. Well, you've clearly had a very interesting and very uh, wide array of experiences. Uh, how much of your life experiences gets into your books. Do you draw inspiration from them? or do you just... I don't know if it's inspiration, <laughs> but an awful lot of my life experience is in there because I think you have to write what you know. And uh, what one knows, at 
least in my case, filters into the writing. I mean, I've written some military science fiction. I don't pretend to know the ground war very well. So my military science fiction draws on my exploits and experience in the Navy and as a pilot. I read a lot about politics and economics because I know them. Even in the Reckless series, where the first book is about Laris, he's an apprentice cabinet maker. I know woodworking. It's not by accident that that's why I wrote about him. <laughs> uh, one of the ideas that we like to encourage within the Guild is the idea of a writing sanctuary. Uh, many authors who were doing it as their job say that they treat it like a full-time job. They have a place they go to and that's what they do. Uh, do you have any kind of writing sanctuary or a place that you go to get into the writing mindset? I wouldn't call it the writing mindset, but yes, I do have an office. I don't know it's totally a sanctuary because I also have four dogs who tend to share it with me. But at least they don't comment on the writing. Um, it's basically an office, and it's on the lower level, and since all the kids are grown and out of the house, it's pretty quiet. My wife has a 60 to 70 hour a week job as a, an opera singer and a voice instructor at Southern Utah University, so I don't see much of her during the day, so I don't get bothered too much. Uh, on the topic of music, do you have any kind of music that you like to listen to, any mood music? when you're writing a particular scene? No. As a matter of fact, I like music so much that if, I were, if it were played, I'd be distracted. Um, I have always been one that was perfectly comfortable with silence, unlike some people. I can, I guess it's fair to say that I, I'm at home by myself and I don't need that kind of support. And as a matter of fact, unfortunately, it would be a distraction because I do like music. Okay. Uh, in some of your earlier forums here at Fandemonium, you've mentioned the importance of being widely read if you want to be an author. Uh, are there any topics that you read about that you have absolutely no personal interest in whatsoever, but that you do read them because you uh, find value in them for the sake of your craft? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I happen to like to collect information, and I like to read on a wide range of subjects. Obviously, I have a greater interest in some subjects than others, but I honestly can't think... Well, no, I take that back. There is one subject in which I have absolutely no interest, and that's pop music culture. <laughs> you have, or rather, what is your favorite topic to read about if you just sitting down with a book for pleasure, what do you like to read? Again, I don't have, in that sense, I don't have any one subject. I mean, I've read mysteries, I've read mainstream fiction, I of course read science fiction and fantasy, I read some romances, detective fiction, a western or two along the way. I don't know that there's anything that I haven't read something of. Many writers liken their books to their children. It's impossible to choose a favorite one. And, and you have so many that it may be impossible to choose a favorite one, but is there any one book or one series that you're the most proud of that you think is the most exemplary of your work? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I'm being honest about it, no. Uh, I think, obviously, I'm proud of the body of work. I, I think each series and each book does something a little bit different. And I think, <clears throat> as the old saying goes, I think in some cases comparisons are odious. And trying to compare different things, apples and oranges, or fantasy and science fiction, or one class of science fiction, or one series is to another, is both misrepresentative and not representative of what I do. Okay. Uh, what has been your greatest challenge along the road of becoming an author of the magnitude that you are today? I don't know that there's any one greatest challenge. It seems to me like there, well, first of which is <clears throat> I acknowledge fully and freely that I was blessed from the beginning by parents who supported and believed in me but didn't coddle me. And uh, in 
that sense, I had a tremendous advantage over many people. But once I got out of the house and was somewhat on my own, I would say that the greatest obstacle happened to be my own impetuousness and my own, should we say, lack of political awareness is probably as good a way of, of putting it. And it took a long time to overcome my own self-imposed obstacles, I suppose, is probably as good a way of putting it as anything else. Yeah, uh, on the same uh, topic, what has been your greatest reward? My greatest reward? Being able to do what I love doing and getting paid for it. <laughs> so if, if you uh, were asked the question, if you could do any job and money wasn't a matter, uh, would writing be your answer? Yes. Something that some people like to say is that, oh, writing is so easy, anyone can write a book. I could write a book if I just sat down and wanted to. And anyone who actually does it knows that this is the farthest thing from the truth. How much time and effort goes into an average book that you've done? The short answer is a lot. The longer and more complex answer is I basically work from around 9 in the morning until 9 at night. A little shorter in the summer, a little longer during the school year. And I generally do it six days a week, sometimes seven. Oh, what is some advice that you might have for someone who's looking at getting into the business? Because you've had a lot of experience breaking into and now being in the business. I don't know if I can boil that down very easily, but <laughs> one, read a lot. Read outside the genre that you're going to write in. Because if you only read within the genre, all you're going to end up doing is a subconsciously copying what's there, and copies are never as good as the original. Two, write and keep writing and keep writing and keep writing. And three, finish it. All too many people start and stop and start and stop and try to refine. Finish it first and then refine it. Great advice. Uh, is there any last parting shots that you'd like to, to give any of our viewers? I could give a lot of parting <laughs> shots, but I think I'll refrain in that sense. Okay. Well, there you have it, our uh, quick interview with author Lee Modisett here at Fandemonium 2010. Thank you so much for joining us, and I hope you enjoyed the rest of the convention. I will, and thank you. All right.